Okay. Yep. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hold it off. Okay. And we have something to add to the agenda under committee and board reports, you said? All right. Thank you. Our issue school board meeting, I think. Were you working in the Our issue 21? Anything else? Okay, approval of the agenda. All right, all in favor? Uh, public forum. Anyone like to speak on an item not on the agenda? Well, uh, yes. You're shaking your head. Yeah. Uh, we, we would like to speak to an item that is on the agenda if we can defer our comments. Okay. Uh, until you, until it comes up. Until, until it comes up. Sure. We're talking about the town hall. Alrighty. That's acceptable. Sure is. Approve the minutes of July 11th. Reciprocal would, would allow, I think, reciprocal. Okay. Probably just take the two. Take the two off. All right. A little, a little dip dip there. Just to quite. Other than that, that was the only thing I saw. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? And committee and board reports. RSU meeting, uh, school board meeting. School board meeting Monday, July 18th. Uh, call to order at 7:30 p.m. Uh, nomination for chair board. The new, uh, the new uh, uh, chair this year is Mary Beth Woos. Yes. Vice chair is Maureen King. Um, consent agenda uh, items. The nomination. Uh, Calvin Hatfield as a teacher of English at Kennebunk High School, 50,469. Nomination of Kimberly Marshall as a grade five teacher at uh, ML Day School, 61,283. Nomination of Emily Brady as grade one teacher at Kennebunk Elementary School, 43,259. Nomination of Aaron Shanahan as teacher of English at the Kennebunk High School. 61,283. Uh, nomination of Emma Wilson as an elementary Spanish teacher at the Sea Road School, point eight at the Sea Road School, and point two here at the MLD uh, for $36,050. Resignation of Melanie LaCourse, a school nurse at Kennebunk High School. She was a recent hire and um, she had a family situation and can't move here. So if she resigned, and there'll be a posting for that coming up. Approval of Kathy Jean Roberts as a transportation director, 56,000. We did the annual approval uh, for the superintendent to submit application for grants. They're looking at about 1.5 million of grants to be submitted. Uh, let's see, the authorization of the superintendent to sign lease purchase agreements and the authorization of the superintendent to accept resignations. Old business, they talked about the school board meetings. There was a discussion on how our their meetings sometimes conflict with the Rundle Selectman's meeting. So they talked about maybe changing those to the uh, first and third Wednesday. Uh, well, what they decided to do is they'll keep it the first and third Monday, uh, but they'll make adjustments as necessary to not conflict with, with this board. So they'll... There's a couple of meetings, and what they'll try to do is change a few of those meetings to not conflict with this board. Uh, new business. Um, I think Keith will talk a little bit about this uh, a little bit later on, but cost sharing is back. There will be a discussion on that. Uh, approval of the uh, fiscal year 17 bus lease purchase agreement. Um, it's five buses. Four hundred fifty thousand five hundred seventeen dollars. That was part of the what, what, yeah, budget approval. 
I guess they've got 2.65% uh, on that note. Just updated the school board uh, contact information. They had a whole bunch of um, uh, uh, minutes, I mean, uh, policies that they updated or first readings. Uh, immunization of students, bloodborne pathogens, transportation uh, rubric for corrective action, automated external defibrillators, uh, reporting child abuse and neglect, uh, suspected child abuse and neglect reporting, tobacco, electronic smoking devices. Um, <coughs> they toured the ML Day facility. They're very pleased with that. It's looking really good. Uh, they're very impressed with the work that's going on at ML Day. High school uh, demo has started. The building grounds is off limits. Everything is off limits, but they've got, I guess, one or two specific paths to get into into the building. And they've got, um, they didn't say the amount, but I can't remember if they got or they're working on a grant from Efficiency Maine for LED lighting in that building. An update from, uh, let's see, the board chair. She thanked the members for their time and efforts. Uh, from the superintendent, there is a, a viewing of the most likely to succeed documentary. Uh, that's going to be August 4th from 6 to 7.30 at the Waterhouse Center. And uh, we adjourned at 8.30. The only other thing that I do have is, um, and I, I forgot to bring it, but if the board would like, and maybe I'll just bring it next meeting to share with the public. Uh, we, we've got the numbers for the, Rudy had sent me the numbers that we agreed upon with TA and the busing. Um, so I would asked Rudy a couple of meetings ago to send that to me, and he finally did, and uh, just for the public, I'll, I'll update it. I, I left it at home. I'll update it at, at the next meeting. That's it. I'm okay. Any questions on that? Good, I yeah, can. one question is, yeah. does the state still reimburse for them buses? Didn't it used to be that the state, if we bought a bus, the state would pay us back that money at the time? I don't know. Did I know? I don't I, 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 I recollect that, but it's, I think that was discontinued several years ago, Phil. So. Okay. Just from behind the times. We had, we had our own school board, I remember that. Yeah. Case. Yeah. yeah. Okay, manager's report, the consent decree. Sure, I uh, just to let you know that the consent decree that was negotiated with Du Bois Livestock has been uh, returned to us. Judge O'Neill has signed it. And the planning board asked for a copy, so I provided them a, uh, a copy of that. Uh, and it's available to anybody who really needs a, a copy here at the town hall. Um, the R County Mutual Aid Agreement. That Do we get our money? Yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the York County Mutual Aid Agreement has been signed and uh, returned, so just to let you folks know that that uh, has already taken place. Unless I hear any strong objections, I will be on vacation from the 29th of July to the, probably the 4th or 5th of August. Um, all my contact information will be with the um, with the town hall as well as I will provide, I'll be at camp so I have a phone there, I'll provide numbers and email those numbers to you in the event that any of you need to contact me. Um, we've had some spirited discussions, um, it appears that Representative Perry has been very uh, enthusiastic about trying to do something about the speed on Route uh, 111 and as a result of that some exchanges have been occurring. So. I'm hopeful that at least the state may come down and listen to the concerns that are being expressed. Um, I guess with all the work that's going to be going on along that Route uh, 111 corridor, they feel that they've done a lot of, uh, of the initial um, speed analysis on it. So they're arguing whether or not uh, from, I think it's 50 to 40 is, is reasonable. So I'll keep you posted and keep sending those to you. It's, something happens, we'll, be, we'll know about it. Um, Canbunk Light and Power will be having a, uh, a rate increase meeting. Evidently, it's, uh, it's scheduled now for August 16th at 6 o'clock in the evening at the Canbunk Town Hall. Uh, they've sent out uh, a flyer. I provided one in your packet. It appears that uh, it, it it appears that uh, all their rates will be going up 13.7%. Uh, 
Um, and if I recall, I think uh, CMP just got approval for somewhere around 12 to 13 percent. Um, so if you're a CMP customer, you may be seeing an increase there as well. So, uh, but you have the opportunity to go to the hearing, talk to them, um, and you know perhaps I don't know if you'll have any influence in the adjustment of their rates, but at least you'll be able to be heard. Um, we know the guy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do. <laughs> we, we have influence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and finally, um, we heard back from uh, Maine DEP on the bedrock wells, uh, the retrofitting of those at the landfill. Uh, they're going to be reimbursable. So that's good news. Um, and I'll keep you posted as that project starts. And uh, the last time we did it, we had the engineering company come down and Roger and the crew did the retrofitting of the well. So I'm hoping that we're going to be able to maybe dovetail that the same way uh, this time as well. So uh, that's it for me. Okay, old business. Dedicated patrol deputy. Uh, yes, you had, uh, you had a very nice meeting with the um, the sheriff and the, and the chief deputy at your last business meeting. Um, I reached out to the um, county uh, manager, uh, Greg Sinzer, and Greg provided me some numbers um, for a dedicated patrol officer as well as in another car. Um, again, the, I'll start with the car. It, it looks like it's going to be about $33,000, similar to what we allocated this time. If we wish to lease it or do a lease, they're, they're agreeable to do that, uh, would be a 2%. So our total cost um, will be slightly more if we want to do it over a three-year period. So something to think about if, in fact, uh, we decide to do that. Uh, the other piece of that was that the contract deputy cost, it was a low in a high range, and it, the low was 82 781.66 to $99,240.39 once you eliminate the car from the original spreadsheet that they provided to me. Um, that's slightly more than we pay now, but if you look at the sheets and you can see that our existing patrol deputy does not take the health insurance through the county, and as a result of that, there's a reduction in our, our offer. Now, if a new deputy would be somewhere in that, we're uncertain of that. So I think the county uh, manager has provided us what it would cost if they were new and just a single coverage to pay if they were a little bit more and needed full family coverage. So in a nutshell, it looks like if you take that and you take the high, we're at $132,932.29. For a new for patrol one. deputy to hand car. Mm -hmm. so, so if you if you if you go with the lease, that's about twenty two thousand dollars less. Yeah. If you go with a three year lease, it would be uh, right. one hundred. But you would have to have a uh, you would have to have the special town meeting and Alec and make sure that we're okay for the three year lease to get the town to approve that. So yeah. I'm not quite sure where you want to go with it now. I mean, now we have a number. You know, we're looking at 132, um, There's several ways that you could look at it. Um, if it was, if you felt that compelled enough that uh, there was enough discussion at the annual town meeting to warrant a public hearing and some discussion with the townspeople, we could schedule that, provide that information to them. Um, if you feel it's more that we should delay and wait until the annual town meeting and have a discussion with the budget committee and so on and so forth as we go through the process. We can do that. I'm up to anything that you would like to do. I'm not quite sure where where we go at this particular point. Well, we didn't have a great attendance at the town meeting, and we heard from about two or three people tops at that at that meeting that they were interested in this. I think we need more public input, um, however that's to be derived, but uh, you know, whether it's public hearings or we get some information out somehow that we're considering this, and, you know, both from the business folks and from the residential community. Um, I, mean, I think 
most of the people we heard were from were the business folks at the meeting. So um, if I don't know what other people want, you know, because we'll okay. be up in the 250 grand range. Yeah. Two deputies at that point in time. Yeah. yeah. And, and the last time we tried that, they moved the whole thing out of the water. They turned everything back. Mm -hmm. I, you know, what we can do is we've had some, um, we've had some people come to the office. They want us to do another newsletter coming up at the beginning of the fall. Mm -hmm. So, so we can sort of stop putting together that package and getting that out, getting some information on the website, um, and wait for the publication to maybe get out there, and then maybe we should schedule, or in the meantime. Figure, figure a date that you would like to maybe have just a public discussion. Uh, maybe before your business meeting that people come in and talk to you specifically about that issue to determine what, you know, what the public's really resonating, whether or not that's going to uh, be something to, uh, that they really want to consider. Because at the end of the day, I, I mean, you're right, if we, if we hold off, the worst case scenario would be 33 cents a thousand if we took a bite of the whole enchilada at the annual town meeting, which is something that we should we need to think about. So that's that's my thoughts. If, if that, and I and I agree with you, Tom. I think that you know we we heard some thoughts, and but I don't think we've uh, we've got a big enough cross section of the public telling us that they really want another patrol deputy. Right. No, put it out there in the newsletter. Let the people know we're talking about it. That we are. Um, looking for information yes. and input and see where it goes from there. Okay, and then, you know, a as we get that information out and we get ready to do the newsletter, we'll have to pick a date mm -hmm. where we'd like to have some public input. And, you know, at that point we can advertise it and encourage the po folks to come to us and talk are you, about it. Are you thinking about getting that newsletter out? What were we thinking, Simone? Maybe uh, the end of August, maybe beginning around Labor Day, right. around, around that time. So that we, I mean, I don't want to let this sit too, too long, then maybe we can pick towards the end of uh, September or something mm -hmm. like that. But That's what I was thinking, maybe if we do beginning of September for, you know, get the uh, school information as far as the new construction, um, get Heritage Day in there, get, you know, a bunch of other things. And, yeah. You know. Yeah, because, I mean, I agree 100% with Tom, you know, couple of times, I know a few years ago it was brought up, but then I think it was a year or two before that, might have been the year that I was running, I had people telling me, you know, we don't want it anymore, you know. <laughs> so, you know, it, what's the flavor this week? But, I, you know, I think we need to try to get the word out, you know, and maybe put something on the website that's saying, you know, you know we're looking for input from citizens on, on, on this and that we will be holding a public hearing sometime in the month of uh, maybe September or something like that, or early October. Or, I don't want to wait too long. But yeah. uh, September's not usually bad. It's once they get people get back into school. And, you know. it, 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 it's, it's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I, think I'm, I'm, I think I'd like to still visit this issue if we're, we're going to head down the road with the budget board at some point in time. Yeah. Because we don't know what other impacts we're going to have going forward. Next year, I just I'm, I'm not real comfortable with a special town meeting to, you know, to do that at this no. point. Um, yeah, because once you committed it, you're right. obligated to yeah. that. Right. Yeah, I mean, and, and to your point, Tom, you know, we've got we want to make sure that you know we look at Rogers, I mean, you know, yeah. that you know look at you know the capital stuff for the the fire department. We want to make sure that we've got and we've asked them guys to give us a plan so that we can plan, you know, going forward. And I uh, mean, don't know where cost sharing's headed. So, right. Yeah. Um, right. Okay, well, I think we've got a plan. I, I think we've got a, a strategy here that we can move forward with. And hopefully, we'll get some more feedback from the public as to what their, what their thought process on that. I wonder if we could ask the state police to do a drive through once in a while. They go up and down 111 a hundred times a day because they've got a barracks in Waterboro. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if they might do a drive through. Well, I, I don't know what the, it, it, I don't know if there's any, there's, because we have a patrol deputy, that doesn't necessarily yeah. stop them from still patrolling here. So I'm not quite sure, but I'll ask the question and yeah. try to get some more information. You know, if they drive through a couple times a week, that's a couple times that uh, they might see something. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, you had uh, you had asked uh, me to reach back out to Will Conway at Surveyo Technics to try to determine if, in fact, we were able to um, work out an agreement with Jim Plamondon about uh, a piece of his property, what effect that would have on the overall estimate of cost to construct at that site would have been. And, um, I provided that spreadsheet to you, and it appears that um, it looks like it's almost $160,000 reduction, about $159,600, because the uh, the length going in would be not as long. Uh, the location of the building now would be more uh, more coinciding to Plamondon's building, um, and uh, the we would not have to put the uh, septic system underneath a parking lot, as I understand it from his analysis. So uh, when you look at that, as well as your, your, um, your analysis that you had on the Limerick Road site, um, they're virtually identical, um, in, with the exception of uh, the cost associated, which we have not negotiated for the Limerick Road site what that cost would be. So we had some estimates, we've got some thoughts of what we thought it would be, but nothing is in concrete now. So uh, virtually both sites are pretty close to the same cost. Um, where does that leave us now uh, in terms of where one of the things that you had asked when we started this process was you wanted to make sure that you were in a position that in the event that you finally make a decision of where you wanted to be, that you had some numbers. So when we had a town meeting and we were talking to the public, that we knew exactly uh, roughly what kind of cost we were looking at. I think we have those now. Um, and it's a, I think it's a, uh, a matter of site selection, uh, what may be priority one um, or priority and, and or priority two, and how you want to put that together in a way to get it out to the public and to figure out where we proceed to now. I think Sam, and this is where Sam and Jeff, we are going to say a few words, words if, it's, oh. if it's all right. Sure. Okay. You were going to wheel off, I think. If I may just sit here and do that, I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, yes, Sam and I have been talking. Uh, I've moved here almost 14 years ago now. And uh, when I moved here, we were the early discussions about a town hall were going on, as I recall, maybe 12 years ago. Uh, we aren't quite there yet. Uh, we've made some progress, but uh, it's been a long, long time. And uh, uh, looking back at uh, where I moved from, I was on a, a vision committee. And this was 2000, and we had a 2020 vision committee. Well, 20 years is almost up now. And uh, in some respects, the same is here, true here. Uh, we tried to put together plans for infrastructure improvements and what the town would look like downstream, you know, 20 years, 30 years, even 50 years. What, what's your vision? And then, uh, in our case, what is the role, if any, of the town hall in, in building that vision. So uh, Sam and I put our heads together and tried to come up with some thoughts on how we might get over this hump of actually making a decision that uh, the public will understand and accept and then move on from there in terms of actually uh, uh, choosing a site, building a building, moving on. If I can just pick up with that, I'll turn it over to Sam. Thanks. Uh, 
weekend, we're talking again about building a new, citing a new town hall as a key element of our town infrastructure. Yes, we all understand that this need has now reached a critical state and is needed to serve the expanding governance needs of our community. I put, that may be the easy part. I put it to you that it's also equally critical that this facility help meet the deeper need of building community among the residents of our town. The recent withdrawal experience once again demonstrated how important it is that we find ways to bring our people together. We must support building both a sense of community and a place of community here in Arundel. And this new town, town hall can play an instrumental role in filling both needs. We're talking about the future of our town. The future is where your children and grandchildren will be living. What and where you decide to build today could go a long way in helping shape the Arundel they will experience. One of the great philosophers of our time, Yogi Berra, once said, if you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. Well, today, you have a great opportunity to help our town better understand where you'd like us to go, to become, to grow over the next 20 or 30 years, perhaps even for half a century more. Plainly said, the, our town needs a center of identity. And this is a golden opportunity to give filling that need a great start in the right direction. What are we talking about here? The focus has been primarily on looking at site purchase and construction costs as the primary basis for deciding where the town is. We suggest it's time to take a longer and deeper view of this issue. Is cost really the only factor that should be considered? We think not and suggest this, that it's critical that the selectmen, the stewards of the well-being of our town, think also about what this new community facility can mean to our future. What it means is imagining the world your kids and your grandkids will live in, and thinking about how the location and configuration of this new town hall can enhance Arundel's future as a real community. Support future town community facilities and recreation facilities. Become a magnet for new business growth and activities. Burnish Arundel's image as a great little town in which to live and feel like it's the true center of town. Now building these future value concepts into your decision process is tough. Thinking about the future is never easy. We therefore offer the following suggestion for your consideration. We suggest that the board direct the town manager to develop a draft evaluation criteria checklist for the selectmen to review in the fourth quarter of the year. This checklist will contain both tangible cost elements as well as more intangible considerations such as I noted above. Prospective locations could then be evaluated by you rationally and with due consideration of both current cost and future value implications to rental taxpayers. This checklist could be completed individually by each selectman for each site and the results then aggregated to reflect the whole board's thinking. Jack and I stand ready to offer help in this so vast. This evaluation process will give a clear and documented sum summary of each site's cost and value attributes and will objectively and transparently support the rationale for the selectman's final decision on a town hall site purchase and building construction. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. And I, have for, I have this sort of ready in written form because I know you didn't take that all down. And so let's pass it out. be a good time to form a town hall committee made up of a selectman, the town manager, and perhaps uh, two or three townspeople to look at both sites with all the pros and all the cons and come back and report to the board what, what, which site they think would be the most advantageous and why. I think, I, I think what uh, Jack and Sam are trying to outline here would be something almost to that, but that um, 
that the information that you have now and that uh, perhaps the matrix that we could put together would, would give a uh, numerical score to this, which would then narrow down the site based on your own uh, uh, observations and thoughts. Um, and then be able to bring that together to see where, where, where you are as a group in terms of which site seems to be the most advantageous as you're, as you're reviewing this stuff. Um, and I, you know, I, I'm, not, uh, I'm not unwilling to do that. I'm just, uh, you, you sort of, I'm just sort of sitting here, you know, we've got all this information. We, we've got to try to, find, try to find a way to put it together so it makes sense to you all and to, um, to really try to make a final decision on which one of these locations may be the best for now and in the future for the community. That sounds like a broken record, but I think you need more public input on both sites, whether you establish a criteria list or not that we, that the public even can use. Uh, that's fine, but I'd like to have uh, some indication from the community here. I mean, it's going to be a tough sell. Regardless, and we better have as many people on board before we take it to town meeting as we possibly can. And I think that and I know it's hard getting people out to these things, but you know what's going to impact your your wallet. You understand that, um, and um, you know get some understanding of why we we need. Because I've I don't know about you guys, but I certainly have heard comments that what do we need in town hall? So it's perfectly fine. Huh. And see, we've had a lot of people coming in lately that say, when are you going to go? I know. I mean, that's, that's yeah. exactly I've, right. I've you know? heard both sides. Yeah. That's right. I have I've heard too. what you have, yeah. and I've heard what Simone yeah. has. And, and, and even on this board, I mean, we have diverged right now opinions of where, where, we, ought to, where we ought to go. <laughs> exactly. But then, so I, see, I think we need some help from the citizenry here, you know, if, uh, to give us some direction of what they think the important criteria are. Um, you know, whether it's site location or whether it's, Simone has pointed out a number of times, whether it's um, an anchor for some mm -hmm. additional development around a uh, site for business, etc. I mean, I, I don't know how we do that other than schedule or try to get people out. Now, whether that's a committee does that or whether we do that, um, that doesn't matter. But I, I don't want to make a decision on the site until we put them side by side and let folks look at them. Say this is what we're this is what we're looking at at this point. What are your thoughts? I totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. My my thoughts are I just you know I want to be careful that we it's, we don't get in a paralysis by analysis situation mm -hmm. here, right? So we've been talking about this for you know many years, many years, and you know we're at a point now where we've got two pieces of property. It kind of looks, and maybe we can do a little bit more homework, but it kind of looks like either one is a wash. So now it comes to what, you know, the point that Tom was making. And I would like, to, I agree with Tom, I would like to get some public input on, you know, put it out. Maybe we have a couple of meetings where, you know, the, you know, the, um, the public forum is it, 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 that. We're going to talk about the town hall. What are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? You know, and we gather this information and then we go from there. Uh, you know, to me it's just, it's it's as simple as what's the location. I, I think there isn't one that stands out over the other is what's best for the town. Do we keep a rural character? Do we try to build something that may come to fruition for business down the road? I, I you know, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know that. But I think that's where we're at the point right now. We just, you know, let's, we get these two sites. Let's, let's, Let's get the numbers, let's make sure we get the numbers are concrete so they can go side by side. We can get some sketches, we can put some sketches up, and then we just get public input. Here's what we get, and then, you know, we hear from the different sides. And then at that point, to me, I, I don't know if we want to put that out to vote, but, um, you know. I, 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 As I said, I just, want, I just want the input, whether it's, in, you know, we've got to invite people. You know, like we did a comprehensive <coughs> plan, we invited businesses in on certain issues, we invited yeah. Residential community has a certain issue. Reach out to those. I mean, I think you're going to find this. The ideas are different depending upon the constituents you have sitting in the room. So, um, not that I want to separate people out, but I think we really got to reach out and 
And I think we need to have the meeting someplace other than here because we, I don't think we're going to have room here. Yeah. Joe? Um, I, I agree that the public hearing, getting ready to talk about it is important. But I think right now what I'm hearing is the only thing you would have to sort of present are the costs. Because that's the numbers that you have. So I, I think this idea of a matrix and just trying to figure out what are the other pieces that have value, uh, that those being identified, and you guys working with them, talking about them, looking at it, so that when you bring it to the public, you're not just bringing costs, you're bringing some of these other value pieces, and you've done some work in thinking about it, so that uh, when you have the public, public meeting, there's some more meat to it, otherwise I think people are just going to gravitate to costs. So I think the matrix could really be a way of, to kind of look at that, that piece of the equation and uh, get some meat behind it before you would take it to the public. And really that's the key to what I think, Jack, we were trying to introduce was some concept of future value, for the, you know, the kind of town that our kids and grandkids want to live in. We need community and, and somewhere in this thinking has got to go, how are we going to build community of sense in place? And it's not just this site or that site. I, I don't know, know enough about either site right now, but this, somebody should be giving some thinking, and I put it that it's the leaders of the community with input from the community, but the leaders uh, as to what's important to us. Uh, which of the sites is going to be better? And I know nobody can tell the future. Nobody knows what's going to happen. We have a sense of how the town grows and the people in it. And, we must have some sense to be able to put some definition on A is better than B for new facilities. What's better for the, in the communication, the transportation network of the town? Where is it going to fit? Where are people going to feel comfortable going to, to go to a ball field or to go to a community center that we may be built 20 years from now? This is where it's going to happen. This is the chance. And if we just pump it down wherever it's cheapest, it may not work. I don't know. Maybe it will, but there should be some thinking on different areas other than cost and construction. That's all I'm saying. And I agree with John, by the way. If you just open it up for people's comments, you'll get thousands of comments, but you're not going to get any real framework to put them into. Yeah. Um, I'll probably say something along the same lines, but the five of you, as elected officials, are uh, you, you represent our town. You're all trusted, and and you have far more insight into all of this. And I think you'll find, if you actually sit down and go through this process, whether you publish the results or not, you'll find it really beneficial to coalesce your thoughts and take take each subject and, and talk about it. Uh, just you know, a workshop instead of a selective meeting. Or a workshop selectors meeting uh, to spend a couple of hours and go th go through a matrix like this and it, and it really helps flush out what you know all those thoughts that flow in the back of your mind and but never quite come out together uh, and once you're forced to put it on paper and then bring it together you'll I think you'll find that uh, you know, some areas you'll totally agree on, some won't be a consensus, but then you work through those items. Uh, it's, it's a very useful process, and I would argue would be more productive for the five of you to do it than to get, you know, the biases that I have and the biases that other people have um, introduced into that. Because you all represent the talent. So, I, strongly suggest you at least try to go through the process. Maybe. Where do we go from here? Would, would it be helpful to meet like maybe with the planning board and comp plan members as a workshop and just get some of their input? Would that just help any at all? Or? Oh, Budget These board. are people least committed to the community here. They're working, right. dedicating their time, uh, right. so they have an interest in what's the things that Sam has pointed out here. So, mm -hmm. 
the budget board maybe. And yeah, every, you know, anybody and everybody as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be prejudiced, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that, that certainly could be a second step, but after the five of you have pulled their own minds together and have a, a sense of it, uh, then expand that to all the committees and, and go, go to a wider view, see if it differs materially from the well, I certainly think that we as a board need to come to a consensus. I'm not sure that we have yet. I know we've had some discussions and we, you know, but as a board, I don't think the five of us have actually decided which site we would like the best to go. So, you know, maybe that's step one and then we go from there. But either that or sit down and put down all the pros and cons of both sites. Yeah. I mean, and not just thinking pros and cons, what it's going to take to develop the site, the cost, the, and the numbers look at, again, what we're looking for 20 years down the road. Um, you know, what, what with both sites, what can be done with both sites, what, what other things could be used, could that site be used for? Um, would it be a, a skating rink? Would it be a, a, a basketball court? You know, would it be some other community use that we could have besides having the town hall on that, so on, on a site. So. Well, I don't think any of those sites, are, those two sites, are picking up the other than the town hall. Yeah. <coughs> that's, that's pretty much it. Yeah. So, but yeah, we could. Yeah. You know, I certainly think that we, we should get together and make a decision. Yeah. Uh, uh, you will decide to spring for the extra money to buy the entire parcel. Right. Then you would have you would have room to expand considerably. Yeah, you don't have much have to do everything day one. No, can't do all at once. John? Uh, yeah, I I guess I would just ask what harm is there in uh, maybe the town manager and a couple of folks just it's just a structure by which a, a way of thinking of things. It's nothing more than that. But I, I think having run different planning programs myself, that if you try to think of all the pieces while you're in the workshop, you might miss some. If a couple of folks kind of think these are the 10 things maybe we should be at least thinking about, bring that to your workshop. So I think this matrix is simply, it's just a tool uh, to put a little structure between your thinking. And I guess I would ask, What's the harm in trying to have a few people come up with that? If you don't like it, you can throw it away. <laughs> but, but yeah. I don't see any harm, obviously. Yeah, we'll take all the we'll help. Take all, that's exactly yeah, right. We'll take all the help we can get. <laughs> that's the purpose. I mean, point. I've done this a few years myself. I mean, this is a draft, okay? You can't see it right now. Okay. But, but Keith knows that we're well on the way to giving him what he needs, I think, to start with. <laughs> Where, where? Well, I think uh, you know. If you don't mind, I'll uh, I'll sit in and try to work with uh, both Jack and, and Sam to try to put together something. And I'll present it to you folks so you can look at it and maybe get your thoughts on it. At the same time, we we just got done talking about dedicated patrol services and the need for public input mm -hmm. and more. I'm not quite sure if we want to dovetail it with the same meeting, but if if our if our intent is to try to get more of the public involved in this, then we need to we actually really need to go out there and say, hey, look, we need your input. This is where we are. These are the sites we're looking at. This, what do you folks think? And see what kind of what resonates from those folks as well. Um, I think that's the way we should go. I think we we'll do the matrix. We'll get some information to you. We'll pick some dates in the future here that uh, that we need to have some sort of uh, public you know, forum, a public discussion on it. Um, provide all the information that we've already we already have from Surveyor Technics in in relationship to site development, uh, locations, um, all that kind of stuff. I'll talk to Will about maybe having that information blown up so we can have it available for the public when they see it. Um, even and the then, plan of the building, so they'll know what what we have in mind for the, for the building and the size of the building. Right. Um, 
I, I think that's the way to go. I, I you know, I, I think, um, I think your staff has been wonderful. That has to work in that facility. Um, you folks know that that facility is lacking in a, a variety of plethora of areas that really need addressing. And oftentimes we've held off addressing some of those items simply because we're having this discussion. So um, I haven't heard anybody walk through the door and say, we don't need a new town hall. No, I haven't, <laughs> I haven't heard it. No. They come in and say, geez, we've been talking about this. When are we going to decide on it? So those are the things that I'm hearing. So what can you have for us for the next meeting? Well, I think we'll try to work on the matrix. Um, I think we'll come up with some. I'll, I'll come up with some suggested dates of public forum. I'll reach out to Will and see what he can put together in terms of presentation material from what we've already have available to us. Um, maybe blow it up um, if you'd like. I, you know. Um, I think that's a good start. Um, and then we'll talk again at one of your business meetings before we move forward with this to, um, to see if the thoughts that, that I'll, I'll just put them down and what I think we should be doing are coinciding with what you folks think um, we should be heading towards. And then making some decisions about when we meet and who we talk to. I, I think that when we go to the public, if we can come to a consensus, I think that we need to go to the public and say, this is, we feel it's this site is just fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. and we present that to the public and let them change our mind. I mean, they're obviously going to vote for anyway to make the right decision, <laughs> but I mean, I, I think that we as a group need to come together and if we, we may not, I mean, we all we may all be on a different site, but I, I, I think we need to try to work towards but if we sit down and write down the pros and cons of what we feel, both sites make our own checklist. Um, again, using those thoughts of of a center of identity and not saying we're not going to look at the cost because that's going to come into it very heavily. Um, future value and building community. Looking at that with that in mind. And, and write everything down. I have to have. I have to write everything down. <laughs> I think uh, I, I don't. I disagree with Dan. I don't want to come in to a public hearing on which side is preferable and say we as the board of selectmen yeah. have already decided yeah. it's this one. Yeah. I mean that's just right. That's, I, that just kind of dulls yeah. the conversation immediately. I, I, I don't want to say that we select. I, I would like to say, you know, this is our suggestion. No different than the R issue twenty one. Right? I, I don't know. All this stuff with the R issue. They were looking for us to say, hey, which even though as the board, we didn't, we didn't come out and say we individually came out and said, look, we're, we're for this, we're for that. And, and I may be wrong, but I mean, I think the public looks for us to make a decision. But we ultimately will make a decision because yeah. we'll be putting on our war article at some point in time. Then. But I think I just want to—I don't want to suggest to the public that our minds aren't open to any oh, any yeah. piece of information oh, they might have no, that might be important right. to the decision-making process. Yeah. Now I'd I, like to present them with both lots and with um, everything that we like and dislike about both lots. Everything that works for us, what works best, what doesn't work best, the whole thing about both lots. See, I I, I see Dan's thought process is the last piece of this. Yeah. I think uh, if we have the, if we do the matrix, we have a couple public forums, a public to hear, yep, to, to hear what's going on. At the end of the day, you folks will have to make a final right. decision, yeah. and then that will be put on a warrant. There will be another public right. discussion yeah. on that. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have all that information before them as well. So um, I think Dan's at the end. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've got some real work. Yeah. I want to get moving. We're yeah. talking about this too long. Paralysis by analysis. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
13 years. I don't know how long I have left. So <laughs> we want to do it before you go, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is that a promise? Yeah. Yeah. Stick around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, don't go. We want to see. We want you to see many years of this place. Yeah. So, can I can I just throw in something else for you guys to consider at the site? I think one of the other things that we have to see is that the community is growing. And, I, and it's like sometimes we think of the town hall just as the people that are coming in to register their vehicles, but this is also going to be a facility which you get a residential and a commercial zone where elections, meetings, the lighting issues of a residential area, some of these things have to be not considered as well because you know planning board has public hearings, uh, all of these people are going to be coming in and out. And I think that's down the line you have to think of like, the 20, 30 years from now as well. That will be part of our discussions when yes. we have those yep. discussions. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just throwing, throwing that, that out. But I'm just but throwing that out. Right. That, that is to, something yes. to consider because sometimes we think of the daily things which are just, you know, one or two cars, but then you know what it's like with elections and the parking and the situ the traffic in and out and in residential areas. That's why I thought your suggestion about having a planning board would be good because they will be yeah, they, they're more in tune with those issues than perhaps we are and the planners probably be assisting us with those issues yeah. as well. Yeah. Okay. Well I think I have a, a, a sense of direction here and uh, we'll be in front of you again as we will with the dedicated patrol stuff. We'll just try to keep kicking this ball down the field and see if we can get to the goal line. Also. Okay, let's go on to cost sharing agreement representation. Yes, received a, a letter from uh, the superintendent. I, I placed it in your packet. Um, they're looking to have a uh, two municipal members and one school board member to be part of a cost sharing amendment committee. Uh, they are scheduled their first uh, amendment committee meeting for Wednesday, August 10th from 6 to 8. Um, so for us this evening, I think we need to try to determine if in fact we have two members of this board who wish to serve on that. I reached out, I had a phone call from Ira Camp, who is our, one of our school board member, and he has indicated that he would be willing to serve on this committee uh, if so chosen. Um, I also heard from Diane Roberts, mm -hmm. who indicated to me that she would be willing to serve on this committee if, in fact, you would like to have her serve. Um, I thought she'd be here tonight. She said that she may be able to make the meeting, but I told her that I would mention it to you folks as part of that. She was on your cost sharing agreement committee initially as a member of the school board. So um, my view is that um, I believe the two municipal officials should be from this board um, and then you would have one official from your school board. So um, and then uh, as the manager I would be like an ex officio member to this to the committee would go to the meetings and uh, make sure that we have all the information that we need uh, to present to them, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, I, I think two members of this board should serve in that committee. Last night we had one selectman and one member of the budget board. That is correct. You did. I'm not quite sure if you want to do that, um, how, how you wish to proceed. Who went the last time? Did you uh, was on it. It was Sean. Uh, it was Sean. From the from the budget committee and uh, Diane Robin. She was a school board member at the time. That's yeah. correct. Yeah. So that one was the selectman representative. Town manager was there. But you know, I, I certainly agree with Ira Camp. I think. Uh, yeah. I'm going to be on vacation for a quick part of that. I may not be around on the 17th. I mean, I won't be around on the 17th. Okay. Yeah. Do you, do you wish to break it up uh, as you did before, um, have a just one representative from the Board of Selectmen and, and have me reach out to uh, the Budget Committee and see if there's one man that wishes to serve? I'm, I'm not quite sure how you... Would, would you do it, Tom? I mean, I don't, I'll do it. I, 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 I was on the last one, so I don't mind being on there, but 
I think that as part of the program, we do need to, to select them. So. I have every intention of it. They said that this would be open to yeah. the public, so yeah. I have every intention of being at the August 10th meeting. Um, just to sit there and listen, but I'm 99% you know, sure I cannot make the August 10th meeting. Jack Turcotte, then. So how would you wish to proceed? Do you want to select, uh, try to get one from the budget committee, or do you want to take two from the from the board, or do you want to, as you suggest, try to reach out to somebody else in the circle? I don't think Mr. Jacko's obviously has yeah, he's got vast experience. vast experience with this stuff, but uh, and he may not be willing to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. So I had tapped that well a number of times already. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm the new guy in the block, maybe I can get there. But would you rather do that than, than serve you than, than if do it? I'm just thinking in terms of bringing expertise to the table. I don't have any particular expertise in, in this at all, but uh, you know, if Jackie wanted to do it. That's just something that I'm not really aware of either. I'll do it, but you know, if, if we could get Jack. Well, do you want to serve too? Yeah. All right. So why don't we do this? Uh, we'll have Ira, Velma. I'll reach out to Jack. If Jack says no, let me know. Yeah. Tom, you're in. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, Dan, and Dan's going to be there anyway. I'll be there on the table. Okay. Great. We'll do that. Thank you. Okay. And the uh, table one, which is right here. Look to approve is it just payable. It's, yes. yes, but it's okay. a 16, and she's kicking the 16th fiscal year in the 17th yep. fiscal year separate. So. Yep. Second. All righty. All in favor? Any other business? Okay. Yep. Just Something? Yeah, I wonder when we were talking about the uh, property uh, the town hall, have we reached out across the street? Yes, we have. Um, Nothing. Yeah, I know. Yeah. That was our number one choice. I know. I know. I think it was everybody's number one choice. However. Okay, any other business? Anything else? Anyone here from the public? Dan, that uh, Dan Bluse was elected chair. Yep. Uh, we had a big issue, as I recall, over the last several years over local control. <laughs> uh, here we have the chair of the RSC school board, $43 million budget, a lady from a little. Is that enough local control? It's on one boat check. <laughs> That's true, yeah, but she knows uh, different than us. They will, but she gets right. right. the agenda. Yeah. Some animals are more yeah. than other animals. <laughs> it, was, it was a very good choice, by the way, by the, in my view, by the uh, school board. Oh, by the way, I did have a phone call this week from from one Arundel taxpayer who is not in favor of adding another contract deputy because. He said that the one we have, uh, he didn't feel was doing his job. So I told him to get in touch with you and, and uh, with the issue. And thank you. Okay, we have a motion to adjourn. Yep. Second. Thank you. All in favor? That's it. Thank you. Yeah. I will. <laughs> will jump. I'm going to camp. I'll be painting. Where's your camp? Uh, it's up outside of Scott Eden. Uh, yeah. 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 join you right there. All right. That's fine. Come on up. I'll be your model. Paint brushes will be ready. <laughs>
Is it on? Uh, I think so. Oh my God. Mm -hmm.